photographers, you asked me to compare the Fujifilm X-T200 with its close relative, the X-T30. Now, as two members of the same family, they clearly share many of their characteristics, as well as design DNA, but in other ways they're quite different. Each has exclusive features and capabilities missing on the other. Now, I'm going to provide you with a detailed look at the physical characteristics and compare the menus side by side. I'll also provide quality examples and demonstrate their performance for features like focus and burst. This version of the X-T200 has silver accents. The X-T30 is black, but that's superficial. They're available with similar livery. There are dark silver and champagne gold versions of the X-T200. The X-T30 is available in silver and charcoal silver. The X-T30 is heavier, but only by 13 grams, slightly smaller in all dimensions, and more expensive. They both use Fujifilm's X-mount lenses, and they both have an APS-C-sized sensor. The 26-megapixel X-T30 has Fujifilm's proprietary X-trans sensor. The 24-megapixel X-T200 uses the more standard Bayer array. Uh, that should give the X-T30 the edge in color purity and dynamic range, but honestly, it's hard to tell the difference in these images taken using similar settings so that the primary difference is the sensor. Only occasionally do you observe a noticeable difference, like the clouds in this sunset, where the X-T200 made them blue, while the X-T30 rendered a more realistic gray tone. Uh, for a closer look, I've posted these on Flickr, where you can see all of the EXIF data. I may skip over some of the items that are the same between these two cameras, and I'm not going to detail some of the functions. They're covered in my reviews. Although, I'll note that I did not do a detailed review of the X-T200. The first thing, connect the camera to a phone or tablet with Fujifilm's camera remote app using Bluetooth. Both sync time and location with the connected device. You can also configure them to sync photos automatically, and once the app is synced, you'll be alerted to any firmware updates, which the app downloads and installs. This is the easiest way to update of any manufacturer. Uh, this review was recorded with X-T200 firmware 1.1 from June 2020, and on the X-T30 1.2 from March 2020. The OLED viewfinder specs are the same. 0.39 inch, 2.36 million dots. Diopter adjustment on the left, mode selector on the right. The X-T200's three and a half inch, 2.7 million dot LCD has a 16 by nine ratio, best for video. It rotates around to face front, tilts all the way up and down and closes to the body. The X-T30's 3-inch 1 million dot LCD has the standard stills 4x3 ratio and tilts up and halfway down. The front grip on the X-T200 is a little deeper. The thumb rest on the back of the X-T30 is a little larger. Both have a flash hot shoe. Both have a built-in flash with a guide number 5. Flash sync speed is 1 over 180. Both have a flash release lever on the left side. On the front, only the X-T30 has a focus mode selector. Both have USB-C and micro HDMI ports on the left side of the X-T30, where you'll also find a 2.5mm jack for either mic or remote. They're on the right side of the X-T200. The 3.5mm mic jack is on the left side, where it does slightly get in the way of the swiveling LCD. Both include straps. The strap eyelets are different. The X-T200 is a little more standard. The eyelets on the X-T30 require clips and protective strips to attach a strap. Both are included. Battery doors on the bottom, combined with the SD card slot. I find the X-T200 slightly easier to use. Both spring open, neither snaps closed. Both are too close to the non-centered tripod socket. Both support SDXC UHS-1 type cards. Both use Fujifilm's 126S battery. On the X-T200, it's rated for 270 images or 450 using the economy setting. The X-T30 is rated for 380 frames. 
In video mode, 95 continuous minutes of HD on the X-T200, 75 on the X-T30. The X-T200 I received was made in Indonesia. The X-T30 came from China. The X-T200's mode dial is on the right 11 positions. The X-T30 does not have a mode dial. I'll explain in a minute. It does have an auto mode selector. Turn on the X-T200 by pressing the on-off key. On the X-T30, it's the switch surrounding the shutter key. There's a dedicated key for video recording on the X-T200. On the X-T30, one custom fun key. There are three unlabeled dials on the X-T200, three labeled dials on the X-T30, a drive mode selector, a shutter speed dial, and an exposure compensation dial, and then a dial in front and on the back of the right side. On the back left, both have play and delete keys. On the back right, the X-T200 has two unlabeled custom keys. By default, one opens the touch menu, the other locks exposure. On the X-T30, they're labeled as Exposure and Focus Lock, but they can also be customized. On the back, both have a Navigation and Focus Joystick, a Menu Key, and a Display Key. The X-T30 also has a Q Key to open the Quick Menu. I found this to be very badly placed, almost constantly accidentally activating it. Firmware updates have added a Menu setting to disable and reallocate it. Let's have a look and listen to the shutter. Both have a focal plane shutter, and both support both a mechanical and fully silent electronic release. This is mechanical at one second on the X-T200 and the X-T30. As I mentioned, the X-T30 does not have a mode dial. Instead, it takes its cue from the settings you decide to control. To have the camera automatically control the shutter duration, set the shutter dial to A. To have it automatically control the aperture, set the aperture ring on the lens to A. Then, in the lower left, you'll see a P to indicate that the camera is in program mode, where both aperture and shutter are automatically set. Take control of the shutter by turning the shutter dial, the indicator changes to S for shutter priority mode. Now you set the shutter duration. Now, incidentally, in S, the back dial can set the one-third stop steps between the settings on the shutter dial. And it's the same for aperture. Turn the lens's aperture ring from A to enter aperture priority mode, A on the display. And when both are set, the camera displays M for manual mode. Now, if your lens doesn't have an aperture ring, use the front dial. Turn all the way past the minimum aperture for auto mode. For manual shooting, I prefer the controls on the X-T30. Uh, both support shutter durations from 60 minutes in bulb mode to 1 over 4,000. In manual mode, X-T200 dials as slow as 30 seconds. In timer mode, the X-T30 can set as slow as 15 minutes. The X-T200's ISO can be set from 200 to 12,800, although not available when RAW files are selected, one low and two high modes, nominally 100, 25,600, and 51,200 are available. The X-T30's ISOs range from 160 to 12,800. There are three low settings, 8100 and 125, as well as two high settings, 25.6 and 51.2, no restrictions on RAW with the X-T30. In video mode on the X-T200, only ISOs from 400 to 6400 are available. On the X-T30, video ISOs range from 160 to 25,600. On the X-T200, the mode dial is used to select manual aperture, shutter, and program modes. Although program automates both shutter and aperture, the Advanced Scene Recognition mode also detects and optimizes settings for the scene. The X-T200's mode dial has specific selections for landscape, sport, and night scenes. More scenes can be manually selected in SP mode. This includes portrait, portrait enhancer, night, fireworks, sunset, snow, beach, underwater, party, flower, text, and multi-exposure. To access these on the X-T30, Flip the switch to Auto. 
Then turn the front dial, which turns into a virtual mode dial with the same options, except for light trail, which is exclusive to the X-T200. Some of the X-T200's mode settings are drive settings on the X-T30, panorama, video, and advanced filters. Panorama sizes are the same, and on the X-T200, advanced filter options are selected using a split-screen display to compare two settings. On the X-T30, each of the advanced filter positions on the dial can be assigned to a specific filter. Several filters are exclusive to the X-T200, Clarity, Fisheye, HDR Art, Cross Screen, Rich and Fine, Monochrome, and Fog Remove. The shooting screen displays are nearly identical. Exposure compensation or meter in manual exposure mode on the left. Across the bottom, both display the current exposure mode, then the shutter duration, aperture, ISO, and battery status as well as the icons indicating which controls are used to change settings. In the lower left, the X-T30 also displays the current focus and meter modes. Although they're not displayed by default on the X-T200, they can be added with the custom display settings. On the right, both display the current DR, dynamic range setting. That's important because this setting limits the lowest available ISO. Top center, the X-T200 displays the current video mode and the maximum clip length at that setting. That's just under 30 minutes at HD. In 4K, that's 15 minutes. Then the number of images remaining at the current settings. On the X-T30, the number of images remaining and the current settings. Or when the mode dial is set to video, the video mode displays and the total amount of time available on the card along with the output settings for internal recordings and the HDMI output. More on that later. Both are touchscreens. By default, touch selects and focuses the touch spot. On the X-T30, the on-screen button displays the status. After touching, the camera locks the focus, so autofocus is currently off. A touch to return to autofocus mode, or change to the area selection mode, to disable autofocus, or to use tap and snap to take the shot. In video mode, that starts recording. The on-screen button on the right of the X-T200 screen opens an on-screen menu. The focus button in the top left has the same settings as the X-T30, and in the top right, the Q button opens the quick menu. The quick menus are similar, except for the top left. On the X-T200, the shooting mode is displayed. On the X-T30, it's used to select the custom settings. Both support touch operation. On the X-T200, the screen is interactive to see the effect of the selection. The look of the main menus is nearly identical. Six tabs for the settings and a seventh for the customizable My Menu. To save us both some time, I'm going to show you just the differences. I'm using the joystick to navigate up, down, right, left, and pressing it to make a selection. That's the same. On the X-T200, the menu system can also be navigated and selecting using the touchscreen, kind of like a smartphone. The X-T200 offers four aspect ratios, 4 by 3, as well as 3 by 2, 16 by 9, and square. Large 3 by 2 on the X-T30 is 6240 by 4160, slightly bigger than the X-T200 6000 by 4000. Both have five quality selections, and the X-T30 offers both uncompressed and lossless compressed RAW. The first six film simulations are the same. The film simulation screen on the X-T200 offers a touch sliding comparison of the current selection to the new one. The X-T30's additional simulations are Eterna Cinema and Acros Black and White with four color filter variants. In the black and white modes, the X-T30 has a variable color cast adjustment. There's also a grain effect, weak and strong, and the color chrome effect, also with weak and strong settings. The X-T200 has a portrait enhancer setting currently dimmed out, so this is a good time to say that both skip over any dimmed out selections with no way to find out what's wrong. 
Portrait Enhancer is available in SR mode, which dims out other options. There are five levels selected using an on-screen slider. Bright mode improves shadow and highlight detail. Now, click to continue to part two, which includes burst mode, video, and overheating demonstrations.